Well, we're going to transition here, if you're cool with that. Uh, I'm always cool with that. We're going to transition into baseball. We're going to spend a little bit of time on baseball. We're still early in the season here. Um, well, I just wanted to ask you real quick, Juice, lead this in. Um, what do you feel about Anthony Rizzo's injury? I've been reading a lot of stuff online that this was not just a bad bet in Cincinnati that hurt his back, <laughs> that this is an actual thing. So what well, do you think? I want to I want your in-depth plug it. I wonder perception. where they stayed because I actually – I, Oh, they stayed at the I, Hyatt. I travel for – they, uh, no, I'm lying. I'm told. I, don't, I have no idea. <laughs> I was like, I was like, about to stop right now. I stayed in Cincinnati actually to, um, and I think they were downtown. I wasn't downtown. I was like off around the University of Cincinnati. So if you have any University of Cincinnati viewers, hey, I was in your area. I'll be in your area again in about two, three weeks because I got to go that way for work. I will not be. Um, but I, I always like to go. I like to go watch the games. And um, last year when they were there, I caught two they're extremely cheap and it's the park is awesome i love the ballpark over there they yeah, uh they Cincinnati got does food. have a nice ballpark i've been there also but uh it, it's pretty cool i mean because i i know the area and like i wonder where anthony stayed because like i know that when i went to like well that's the article you saw that right i did yeah i i just wonder where he stayed because i i agree that when i went to cincinnati the bed that i stayed in was not the most comfortable you guys got bed bugs <laughs> terrible. so and I know that was a I was in a Hampton Inn, so but I always stay in like Hilton properties just because like I got my Hilton points. I got a Hilton credit card. Do you really? Well, J- well Jamie does. Jamie yeah. does. Oh yeah, it's smart to have it. It man. is. They're everywhere. Yeah, it is. To plug in Hilton right now, I stay in your properties all the time. But my bed in Cincinnati was let not reco- comfortable. Let us record a podcast at the Hilton. Well, that'd be sweet. Yep. But we're very professional. No, I, I don't worry oh. about his back. He's had this issue like for the last three years where he like sits and like doesn't play for like 10 days. And well, the then reason he comes I asked is because it's so early in the season is the reason I asked. I'm seeing yeah, a lot of panic. But you got to look at what things. happened with Anthony in the middle of spring training. Anthony had obviously the shooting at Stoneman Douglas where he left tra- spring training in the middle of it to go tend to his family because they had – to That's deal with very close tragedy. with what happened. Right. I think he went there, if I'm not mistaken. He did. Yeah, he he so, had a uh, he had a whole presser there. Yeah, so he he went and he did some great things for the community. Obviously, for those people who you know were affected. Obviously, that's that's a terrible, terrible thing that happened to that high school and. You know, he went there and he he had his own press conference, and Anthony didn't have the normal spring training or the lead up to the season either because he got married. Right. So Anthony didn't really have like the. So full... maybe you're saying that he's not in game shape. I'm thinking that Anthony didn't have the time to get prepared for the full season, and now it's like, okay, my my back hurts, and obviously he's been traveling around. It's been kind of rough, and um, he, I don't worry about. It. He had a home run in the first series at against the Marlins so and he crushed it he was looking okay his swing was looking fine like I said Anthony always seems to have this issue where he has these back spasms pop up like all the time it's very unfortunate that like obviously he's a big guy and he plays first base and you know he's obviously you know very in shape but like I don't think Anthony had the full like spring train like lead up into the season that he wanted to either because we we talked about it on I don't know if it was the last pod or the pod before that they kind of like they're, they're creatures of habit and Anthony had the wedding. He had, you know, obviously the terrible tragedy at, at the high school and he just had a lot of stuff going he, on. He, I don't worry about Anthony. Cause I, I mean, the Cubs have obviously the lineup and I was saying this when I was at the game on um, Tuesday that the lineup looks totally different when Anthony Rizzo is not in it. Because if you look at it, Ian Happ, Javi Baez, Addison Russell, um, Kyle Schwarber, uh, Jason Hayward, those are five guys that are in your regular lineup when Anthony is not there or when he's there, some, even when he's there. And those are all guys who swing and miss far too much. Um, Wilson Contreras, you're – you know your um, Chris Bryant. Your Chris Bryant's. They they like to put the bat on the ball and they can move it around. And the Cubs have struggled with this early on in the year. If you look at their runners and scoring scoring position average of getting runners home, it's not very good. Oh yeah, look. they struggle. See they White kinda, Sox. They kind of rely on the home run ball and like that's not going to work in the playoffs. I kind of wanted to dive into this kind of this this kind of transitions out of the Anthony talk and kind of mm-hmm. into like the whole Cubs lineup here. I worry that. These guys are going to get to the playoffs, and when the pitching gets better, when you're facing an ace every day, 
and you can't rely on the home run ball because these guys just don't give up home runs, you're going to have to learn to work the ball around. And through the first, you know, 10, 11 games, who even knows what we're through right now? I don't even know the record. But, I mean, I've been watching every game. That, but, to be honest with you, dude, I've watched almost every Cubs game along with the Sox games. Right. I, I've been, been, right I've, every time I come over, you got Well, you I've got been off on. since opening day right? Yeah, because, because of the baby, baby, you know. So we, we've just been chilling and uh, but like watching, you know, baseball together and whatnot. So. But would you not agree that every Cubs game you've watched, they strictly seem to rely on the home run ball? I haven't seen a lot of uh, base hits to score runs. No, they don't. They don't the ball leaves the park. Just like last night when Javi hit the home run. I mean, well, last night they killed it. Yeah. that's. But to get their rally going, Javi Baez hit a home run. Well, the most frustrating part of Tuesday was is the fact that they had runners on with no out, and they couldn't move the ball around. Yeah, we're looking at six and five. So if they lose to Pittsburgh here today. Was Pittsburgh eight and three? Yes, they'll be six and six. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, you know, not the start you wanted to get off to, but let's be honest here: the Cubs were kind of—I don't want to say they were screwed to start the season because they weren't. They had plenty of places. They started out in Miami, right? You know, but against a team that they probably should have swept in four games. But well, it's they the beginning split. of the year, man. It's just right. what we've said in every podcast right. before. It's just the only reason I brought this up is because of comments on Twitter and comments on YouTube is like people panicking. Yeah, I don't, it's, it's too early. Yeah, it's too early. There's 162 uh, games in a season, and the Cubs are going to go through a stretch where they play the Reds and they play. I mean, I, the Pirates are eight and three, but do the Pirates scare you? No, they're they're going to fall off too. You know, they they took care of the team that they needed to take care of already in the season. Brewers. They beat the Brewers three out of four. That's, exactly. You win those games, and usually when you look up at the end of the year, that oh, seems the Reds to, are two and nine, man. Yeah, the Reds are terrible, yeah, and they, they only played good. one against the one of the wins is against the Cubs. They only they only got to play one against the Reds yeah, they in don't a two look game good set. at all. But I, I don't worry about it. And even the Cardinals, man, the Cardinals look terrible this year. Too. Can you uh, can you fill everybody in on uh, what you wanted to talk about earlier and what you wanted to touch on? Because yeah, I, I really love is... I really love to get the Sox and the Bears. But yeah. I want I want to hear you talk about um, your open, experience, experience at opening, at opening day. day. Well, I mean, we did go on Monday. Me, Megs, and Tone. So shout out shout to them. Out. We're uh, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, I would say what that. What the hell just happened? Uh, Chris Bryant was there. Right yeah, there. it right. happens. I'm sorry for interrupting there. Dickerson is like our our kryptonite in this series, man. The guy went well, three for three. The game we went. Well, what the hell was that dude's like? Uh, Murphy from the Mets. Remember? Oh, he. Oh, I hate him. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Daniel Go, Murphy. Daniel Murphy. Yeah, yeah he, I remember he how he pissed us. you off so bad at the townhouse when we had it back in the day. Yeah, I. Oh, God man, damn. I'm Murphy. sorry. Go ahead and go back and open a day. My no, man. it was a lot of fun. We. Uh, we went there on Monday, and obviously, if you live in Chicago, if you don't live in Chicago, it snowed three inches on Monday, and now, as we look out the window, it's eighty, almost 80 degrees and sunny. So, if you don't like Chicago, just wait a day. It'll be different. Um, <laughs> but, so, we go on Monday, and they we get to Cubby Bear, and we have a couple beers, and it was a good time, and got to see Ronnie Woo Woo. So, Ronnie Woo was my guy. I was supposed to take a picture with him, but he walked away, and I didn't see him again. And I was a little mad because about an hour into enjoying my beer, I uh, looked down at my at my mentions and the game's at, you know, the game is canceled, postponed. So we're already out there. It's eleven o'clock. So hit up some of the bars around Wrigley, and it's amazing to see the transformation that that park has um, undergone since shit, even a year ago. I mean, if you look around like the lines, man, it is pretty crazy to see the cubs have created their own kind of fenway park yaki way which i think is amazing for like the cubs are going to be just like killing when it comes to the like getting your bryce harper because all these guys are going to be able to just they're just gonna have so much money it's not even funny dude i'm not meaning to laugh right now but you'll never believe what 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 uh andy changed his twitter handle to what is it? It's MVP Deb's corner. Oh man, <laughs> I just can't. Is he is he trying to corner? I don't know. Cause we, need... we brought up that segment Deb's corner, and then like our third. Oh, that that's gonna happen. <laughs> I just can't. Now it's gotta happen. It's gotta happen now. He's changed. His... I'm sorry. I didn't mean to laugh during that. I just I I saw that. I know, I... and I saw you. I'm, I'm standing <laughs> over here. I'm like, what the hell is going I'm on? I'm sorry. I just, dude, I looked down. I saw it. I... <laughs> How do you change it to? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, what man. is going on? Here? All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ooh, oh, this was, is awesome. Though. That was that was hilarious. Honestly. All right, well, so back to so the Cubs have this brick house bar that's in they call it Gallagher Way now, 
across from Gallagher. It's a three story bar, and everything is cheaper than like your cubby bears, your sluggers that are down um, the side streets that lead up to you know Addison and, and Sheffield and Waveland. Um, but it's just kind of like the Cubs have like slowly been buying up all these properties around Wrigley Field and like transforming their park. And they have the hotel across the street now, which is like two hundred and fifty dollars a night on game day. So yeah, they're they're ridiculous. making all the money on that. Yeah, which people are gonna pay that who oh. come in from out of town. Oh, I get it. I get it. And it's just like they're gonna have this own network, and the, you could just see like the, the Cubs, Cubs leaving are, WGN though is a damn shame. But right, and, sorry, man. But can you blame them for like well, starting their own thing and having everything listen, put in their I, pocket? I understand that Madison Square Garden with the, you know the the Knicks do it. I get it, but. Dude, I don't know, man. There's something just about, for me, loyalty, and, and, a, and I know money is money, and money is more important than everything in the world. I get it, but God, God damn, I mean, for the people, like I told you, and I had just gotten to a, a, a little debate over with one of our friends on Facebook about this, you know, like, um, WGN is shown in almost every country in around the world. Right, the it's Cubs in, are It's everywhere. insane. The Cubs are everywhere. And when the Sox are on it, it's great. They're not on as, as much as the Cubs are, but... I just feel bad for those th- those people because you know who have a favorite team that they get to watch and you know they like American baseball because when I went to Aruba both times, WGN is predominant man. It's in every bar they have it in every you know every bar that doesn't have Direct TV. Right. Their local stations include WGN. That's crazy. Yeah. Because you know I'm going somewhere. I'm from Chicago, man. You know, so I'm going somewhere and I get to watch. You know, even when I was on my, like the Bulls, man, I got mm-hmm. to watch the Bulls. You know, I got to watch the Cubs. It's you cool. know, I even got to see a Sox game when I was there. So that's the only reason I, the Cubs are going to make money from it. Cool. I just, it kind of sucks for people that can't afford yeah, the but network those, and whatnot. Yeah, and I'll, I'll agree with that. But I, I think that if the Cubs do it right, they'll pair with another team in the city and they'll lower the cost that way so that that way they yeah, can who have. Who they going to pair with the Bears? I, well, I mean, I don't know. John McDonough, our, the chairman for the Blackhawks, used to be the chairman for the Cubs. Yeah, but he's tied with Jerry Reinsdorf. Yeah, but I put put all three of them on there. Why not? I couldn't see that. But, I mean, it'd be cool, though. Uh, I'm just saying that I there's mean, so much cool. connection when it comes to the to the Blackhawks and the Cubs that I everybody's contract is done with there, – there are contracts to be done with – with both of those teams. I know he's, he's with Jerry, but that's the thing too. If it ends up having that subscriptions help the Blackhawks as well, then, you know, th- that's a win for the Hawks. Don't you think? I, I, mean, I think so. I think so. I mean, I, especially with obviously this year, the Hawks kind of, they fell off. So they were unable to draw like they were usually able to draw. Cause this is a very bandwagon city when it comes to hockey. Oh, absolutely. I, I appreciate all the people that, you know, stuck, throughout the bad times you know obviously them not being there's on not TV, many of them but like it it's but that's the blackhawks fault that's not anybody's fault but well, I mean, but the hawks were taking right. it off the air right i mean you no, could no, you I, hey, see hey, home hey. games i i'm not i'm not i'm not calling them a bunch of i i just think i've said it in the podcast before it's very bandwagon city we live in oh absolutely you uh, know i can i can agree with that the team that wins is usually the one that that's the that hottest shows. flavor of the month right, that you shows. Know? um but but your that's experience the, at opening day and everything around was pretty cool. Yeah, um, I would say that it's the first time I sat in the sat in the bleachers since two thousand eight, and it's different out there. Um, far less civilized than I remember. I don't know if like I was just so oblivious to it when I wasn't twenty one, but we saw two fights around us, which I were interesting. A girl got nachos dropped all over, which was really funny. But like I. I don't know. The Cubs are so corporate cup now that like it's good because like it's going to put guys like Bryce Harper and it's going to keep guys like, you know, Chris Bryant and Anthony Rizzo and Kyle Hendricks around for a really long time. But it's also like, man, I remember when I used to go to games in 98 when I, with my dad and walk around there and the wholesome part of it, while it's not gone, inside the park seems to stay the same. Around it is very corporate. Well. It's and there's no, but whatever that brings money with, to the franchise that, to get that, players, you know, players uh, in the uniform and ass in seats. But that happens with you success. You, if you look at the Yankees, they put that new stadium up, and they kind of the the attendance dropped. And it's I hope that that doesn't happen with the Cubs. I don't think it ever will because they're a very loyal fan base. I think New Yorkers 
while they're while they're like loyal to the Yankees, I don't know if they're like the most loyal now. Because obviously, as they're like coming back, they're like, you know, they've they've kind of worked through the kinks of like now they're con- they're in contention. But like when they opened up New Fenway, the it didn't show like it did at Old Yankee State New Fenway New Yankee Stadium. They it, it didn't show like Old Yankee Stadium, you know, and right. I, you're, you're you kind of lost a little of, uh, bit of like the, the luster of are like come your, and kill you right now. Yeah, they're all linked together anyway. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, I guess I would. I guess I would say I would also hate my life if I was called like a Cardinal fan or like a.